Hey, what's happening, man? It's your boy, Big Dog Talk Sports. Want to make a video about the late, great Kobe Bean Bryant, a.k.a. the Black Mamba. If you haven't already, subscribed to the channel, hit that like button, and leave all thoughts in the comment section. Uh, what I want to know, y'all, is where do y'all have Kobe Bryant ranked all time? Now, I'm asking, I'm not asking to, you know, argue with you. I'm not one of those toxic fans to where you have to agree with me or if you don't have a player ranked a certain place, I want to get mad and argue with you. I'm not one of those type of guys. I don't mind having a fun debate, but I'm not trying to debate. I'm really interested to know where a lot of you guys have Kobe Bryant ranked all the time. Right? Because, see, I think Kobe Bryant's career is very underrated. Now, it sounds crazy because Kobe Bryant is recognized as one of the greatest to ever touch the basketball. But I think his career is getting underrated. And I think for the big part, it's the constant disrespect from a certain group of media who's under the umbrella of a certain um, sports agency who's under a certain player. And y'all know who, what I'm talking about. And you watch these mainstream media guys like the Stephen A. Smiths, the Nick Wrights, and all these guys disrespect Kobe Bryant's career. And you have the younger people who wasn't really around, or they might have been born, but they was young, so they didn't really know what was going on like that. You know, say crazy things about Kobe Bryant. And when you somebody like myself, who's around my age group, maybe a little younger, around the same, maybe a little older, or whatever, and they look at them like they're crazy. You know, Kobe Bryant, man, like me personally, y'all, I have Kobe Bryant as the second greatest player of all time behind Michael Jordan. You don't have to agree with me. That's cool. That's not what this is about. But I just want to talk about the greatness of Kobe Bryant because I feel like his career is underrated, especially the second half of his career where he started wearing number 24. I think that's criminally underrated. Criminally. Now, we all know about the first half of his career where he won number eight. You know, he had the afro and everything, you know, starting off. Young guy, 17. His first 10 years in the league, three-time NBA champion. He won a scoring title, six-time All-NBA defense. He and those Lakers won about 66% of those games. You know, he won a dunk contest. A lot of people don't remember how great of a dunker Kobe Bryant was. You know, I know a lot of people call Kobe Bryant a little later in his prime to when he won his athletic. But, you know, he's still yam on you like he did uh, um, what's, not Jaleel Okafor, uh, Emeka Okafor. You know, he'll yam on you here and there, but he wasn't like the young Kobe Bryant where he's wearing number eight and he was doing video game dunks, you know, 360 windmills and all type of craziness. But he did win a dunk contest, y'all. I know that kind of gets forgotten about. You know, he's the All-Star Game MVP, eight-time All-NBA. You know, we all know Kobe Bryant. That first half was incredible. You know, I hear a lot of this Shaquille O'Neal carried Kobe Bryant. Narrative that gets thrown around. Hey, young people, see, this is why I try to explain to y'all why awards are overrated. I'm not saying Shaquille O'Neal didn't deserve those awards. He, he deserved them. But do not let one player get an award discredit the greatness of the other player because I'm going to tell you this, right? And this is opinionated, but just hear me out. Now, the year 2000, when they got their first championship, Shaquille O'Neal was clearly be the best player on the Lakers. Clearly. No debate. And I know people go back and look at Kobe Bryant's numbers in the finals and he said, oh, he only averaged about 14, 15 a game. But what they don't tell you is about how he was playing injured. Mainly because of Jalen Rose, who admitted he intentionally injured Kobe Bryant. And that's not me making that up. You can go find it out. See that up, See that for yourself. But even before the injuries, Shaquille O'Neal was clearly the best Laker. He, he was. He was the best player in the NBA. No doubt. But I personally feel like 2001 on, uh, he and Shaq was even. Don't look at the numbers. Like, stats tell a story, but it doesn't tell the whole story. You know? 
And I'm not even mad if you feel like Shaq was the best player in 2001. I'm not even going to get upset or argue with you. But I feel like Shaq and Kobe was 1A, 1B. Kobe was the closer, best def- defender, everything. Like, Kobe Bryant was amazing in 2001, man. So don't let this Shaq, in 2002 as well, so don't let this Shaq carry Kobe narrative fool y'all. That's not what happened. Okay? Don't let somebody win the finals MVP mean they got carried. It's not what that meant. Nobody said Joe Dumars carried Isaiah Thomas. Nobody ever said that. You feel me? But let's go to the number the the, the second half of the season, weight 124. I think this is the most underrated era of Kobe Bryant and the Lakers. Uh, once again, Kobe Bryant. You know, he led the Lakers to three NBA Finals in a row. He lost the first one. He won the next two. And the level of competition, Kobe Bryant had to lead his Lakers past to get to the Finals. People don't talk about that, man. Now, Kobe Bryant, he he faced the most 50-win teams in NBA history when it came to the playoffs. And I believe he, he beat the most as well. But let's stick with the three finals runs in uh from 2008 to 2010, y'all. Do y'all know that that Lakers team was the last team to beat three 50-win teams on their way to the finals? That was 2010, y'all. 2010. But something else people don't talk about when it comes to Kobe Bryant and those Lakers. Uh, 2008 to 2010, all three years getting to the finals. They beat 50 win teams every series except for one. You hear me? Every series they played in, it was against a 50 win team except for one. And that one team was the 2009 Utah Jazz. That's back when they had Darren Williams and Andre Karolinko, uh, Carlos Boozer, Paul Millsap. Uh, what was the big man they had that could shoot? Um, Mehmet Okur. That was a good team. They won about 48 games 2009. But other than that, those three years, every team the Lakers played in the playoffs won 50 or more games. That's one of the reasons why that second era of Lakers, uh, Kobe Bryant Lakers going to the finals is criminally underrated. The level of difficulty just to get to the finals. Hell, to get past the first round was crazy. And I still have Mikey Jordan as the greatest, and it's not his fault, but the Bulls didn't face that level of competition every single year. Not saying they play scrubs now. Not saying that. The 96 Sonics with no scrubs. The Orlando Magic with Shaq and Penny and all them, no scrubs. The Knicks teams, the Pacers, like, I'm not trying to play them now. Don't get it twisted, but the level of competition Kobe and those Lakers seen, especially, you know, the last three final appearances, those runs, was incredible. But Kobe Bryant overall for his career, now, even if you go before then, you know, you had the Kings and the Spurs. He had to see a lot. You had the um, those Phoenix Suns teams. Like, Kobe Bryant's career is underrated, man. What he had to do just to get to the finals, y'all. Just to get there. Though, like in 08, right? They faced the Nuggets. They had the Carmelo, Anthony, Allen Iverson, Marcus Camby. The Utah Jazz in 2008, they won 54 games. They beat them in like six games. Then they faced Duncan, Ginobili, and Parker. They beat them in five. Now, they did lose to the big three Celtics. I'm talking about the 08 run, by the way who's an underrated team, by the way. I mean, this team was so great. Even Doc Rivers was able to win the championship with this team. You know, they had the big three with Ray Allen and Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett. But they had a young Rondo. He wasn't great yet, but you could tell he was on his way. Tony Allen. Yo, that Celtics team was stacked, especially with defense. I might make a video on that team because... Hey, look, this might be a hot take, but I think that 08 Celtics team was better than the 2017 Warriors team. I might have to really look into it to get my final analysis on that, 
But I think the 08 team will beat the 2017 Warriors team. But yeah, man, 2009, man. <clears throat> Excuse me, they faced that Utah Jazz team again in the first round. They didn't win 50 or more, but they did win 48 games. Then they faced that Houston Rockets team with Yao Ming and them. They won 53 games. To be fair, though, McGrady, he was injured in this playoff uh, series. But Aaron Brooks and them, they, and Louis Scola and Matumbo, they was balling, man. They was balling. But I will say T-Mac was not playing. You had the Denver Nuggets, Carmelo Anthony. This time, instead of um, Allen Iverson, you had Chauncey Billups. You had J.R. Smith and all them, Birdman. They won 54 games. Then they beat the Orlando Magic four games to one. Well, that was with Dwight and Turkoglu and Rashard Lewis and them, Jermaine Nelson. And nobody saw the Magic coming out of the East that year. But the Magic, they did their thing. Dwight Howard, he led them boys to the finals. You know, the Celtics, I mean, excuse me, not the Celtics. The Cavaliers was the favorites to get there. But the Orlando Magic, they beat them, man. And that's without um, they start point guard Jermaine Nelson. You know, the Celtics would have been a favorite, but Kevin Garnett, he was out. But the Lakers, they won what, four games to one to that Magic team. And that Magic team, they won about, uh, they were damn near 61 team, 59 wins. You know what I mean? Kobe and them, Trevor Reese and all of them, they, they got the job done. The 2010... Thought they started off playing Kevin uh, Durant and Russell Westbrook and James Harden. Now, they were still young boys out there, but they did win 50 wins, man. Like, <laughs> they, they won 50 wins in the stacked Western Conference. Man. You know? Like, people forget about the road to the finals. A lot of people just stick to the finals. They forget about the road to get to the finals. Nobody was facing competition like Kobe Bryant was just to get to the finals. You know, then you had, uh, who else they played? Um, the Utah Jazz again with Darren Williams and them. Then that Phoenix Suns team. People forget how good that Phoenix Suns team was, man. That Phoenix Suns team had uh, Steve Nash. You know, he wasn't in his prime no more, but he was still balling at this point in time. Um, you had Amari Stoudemire, who's getting forgotten about. I know people talk about Pal Gasol a lot, Chris Bosh. Was also underrated, but Mario Stoudemire was a monster. That national Mario Stoudemire was lethal. That combination was lethal. Um, they had Jason Richardson on that team, Grant Hill on that team, uh, Barbosa coming off the bench, Shannon Fry hitting threes. Hey, side note. Hey, go back and watch Kobe Bryant in the 2010 Western Conference Finals against the Suns. That's some. That was some great basketball on display from the mother, I'm telling you. And the Suns was doing everything they could to try to stop Kobe Bryant. They he just he was just too much, man. Kobe Bryant was on it. That series, Kobe Bryant was on something, man. He was wilding, bro. <laughs> he was wilding. But you know, I, you know, please go back and watch Kobe, man. You know, Kobe Bryant. He, uh, he had two Hall of Fame careers, but they tell you he's not top 10, man. They, they tell you not he's not in the, in the conversation for the GOAT. Like, for him not to be in the conversation is crazy. That's why you have people like myself, you know, people on the Behind the Mission Network, you know, we get on here, we tell the truth. Shout out to who is Hendo. Bro, and like I said, I'm not saying you got to agree with me why I got him ranked that. You don't. But you can't, I don't want you to fall for foolishness. I don't want you to fall to this Kobe Bryant wasn't that great narrative. He don't deserve to be in discussion narrative. That's what I don't like. You know, Larry Bird, you know, he's a one of the greatest of all time. Do I have him as the GOAT? No. But if somebody said they got him in that conversation, I'm not tripping. Because he earned that, man. Same thing with Kobe Bryant. He was the best player of the 2000s decade. He was. And another narrative I want to kill is this 
uh, Kobe Bryant was not efficient. That's not true, y'all. That's not true. If you know basketball, the 2000s, man, was arguably the toughest defensive era ever, if not the toughest ever, when it came to defense. Right? Kobe Bryant was clearly the best scorer in the NBA. And if you look at scoring titles and all that, see, this is why I tell you, awards, do not look at awards, man. Not saying they don't mean anything. But Kobe Bryant was hands down the best scorer in the NBA. No disrespect to Tracy McGrady. Um, no disrespect to uh, who else was a great scorer in there. Gilbert Arenas was a baller. He was good at putting the ball in the basket. Uh, LeBron James, he had a season, he averaged about 30. I think that was 2008 or something like that. One of the years he put up 30. But Kobe Bryant, Carmelo, Kobe was the best scorer in the NBA, y'all. And not only was he the best scorer, he was one of the best defenders, too. Making all defense. And then in that era, you know, in the 2000s, you know, back to the inefficiency part. They say Kobe Bryant was inefficient. I have a question. Dirk Nowitzki, seven foot power forward. LeBron James, a freak of nature at 6'8", 250, right? And we talking about these guys, they score more in the paint. Now, Dirk, he hit jump shots and three-pointers and fadeaways and all that too. But he was a big man, so he did take a lot of shots in the post as well. Now, those two guys shot about 47%. In that era, right? Not overall for their career, but in that era. They shot about 47% in that decade. Do we call them inefficient, y'all? No. No. And they wasn't. And we're talking about guys that's, that shot in the paint more. And I know Dirk is a big man who can shoot, but he's seven feet tall, y'all. So he has some baseline jumpers and, and all that. You know, made moves to the basket. You know how LeBron got down, especially problem LeBron when he was really, really unstoppable. Driving to the basket and yamming on him. But they they averaged about 47% from the field in that era. And if I'm wrong, correct me. I, I have no problem being corrected, y'all. And no, none of us called them inefficient. And we shouldn't have because they was not. We understand the difficulty of scoring in that era. Goes back to Kobe Bryant. He shot about 46% in the era. He was a shooting guard trying to score from the perimeter, especially with double and triple teams when he had players like Smush Parker next to him. Right? And Luke Walton and all them. The average field goal percentage at that time was 44%. So he's about 2% above the league average. 1% below LeBron James and Dirk Nowitzki. So can we, and we talking about this is prime Kobe, y'all. So can we please stop this? He was inefficient mess. Because y'all look at numbers today where the floor is more open, the rules are different. It's not the same. And we see an older LeBron James, he's still dominating in this era. I'm not saying he's the best player in the league, but LeBron James is still getting down. And he's not what he used to be at all. Like, I would hate to see a 2013 LeBron James. Hell, you hate to see a 2008, 2009 LeBron James in this era. I think he's doing something now. Put 2008, 2009 LeBron James in this era. It, man, look. Man, when he was hitting, hitting his prime? Bro. But what I'm saying is, you know, the inefficiency argument is dumb. If you know basketball, you know it's done. You know? Like, he pretty much... Pretty much led two different dynasties on the same franchise, man. I say co-led the first one with Shaq. I'm, I don't want to disrespect Shaq. But we're not going to do this Kobe was riding his coattails. We're not doing that. But Kobe Bryant, man. Y'all tell me what y'all think in the comment section. I think he's underrated, overrated, rated correctly. How y'all feel about the media's coverage of Kobe Bryant? You know how they disrespect him and 
they disrespect the, the, the former players who who holds Kobe at a high regard. And Stephen A. Smith, we still wait for your the answer to the question you had when Shannon Sharp asked you when you did the top five and you had Magic and Kareem both on there, which is not a problem. But when Shannon Sharp asked you, what would you say to the people who say you don't have Kobe Bryant in the top five because he played with Shaq, but yet you have Magic and Kareem both on the top five? So when they cancel each other out, you still haven't answered that. They let you slide. You got to make that make sense. Kobe can't be top five because he played with Shaq, but you got Kareem and Magic both in the top five and they play with each other for five championships, by the way. You still never answered that, and I know you never will because you know it's capped. You have an agenda. You get paid to help push an agenda. If you genuinely felt that way about Kobe, I, I, I would have been cool with it. But <laughs> when you get called out on your logic being wrong and you can't answer it, I don't take you serious. You still haven't answered that. But, yeah, man, I'm out, man. Just want to show Kobe Bryant some love. Just want to know y'all thoughts on Kobe Bryant. Underrated, overrated. Where y'all got him at, man? Big dog out.